All right, go ahead. Right, no. But I always do it this way because they will kill me if I put the camera over that. Especially Mother Bernice, there will be no more Dr. Bell. It'll be a wrap for you. Right, right. So, okay, like I say, we're going to talk about, you know, we still in dunamis, the power of the Holy Ghost. How do we live life with the Holy Ghost on the inside of us? And, you know, we don't give him his reverence. We don't, you know, our steps are supposed to be ordered by him as he's walking through us. We are a vessel that he uses. And tonight's topic that we're going to talk about is famine, you know, lack. How do we use, how do we walk in his, with his authority and we going through famine? Do you know that the children of Israel, God's people, was blessed in a famine? Yes. Sometimes God causes a famine just to bless us. So, somebody pray us in. Don't want to leave God out. Pray us in. young lady. Oh, yeah, you know she, yeah, because I got yeah. on her butt. She need to pray herself out of this one. Lord, thank you for today, Lord. Thank you for thank you, Lord. having a great Tuesday, Lord, as we ask you now to give us a word. Amen, amen, amen. Lord, feed your people. Father, my spirit is happy today. My body is tired, but my spirit is happy. Thank you for everybody that's in attendance. Father, you teach this word as you gave it to me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so we talking about uh, uh, oxymoron. How you gonna have all that power, but you still got lack, want in your life, or you going through a famine? Our first scripture is gonna come from Genesis 12 and 10. Somebody get Genesis 12 and 10. You turn that on. Okay. Mm-hmm. I need my glasses. Oh, I got my glasses in my pocket. Look at God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was grievous in the land. Okay. There was a famine in the land. Sometimes it ain't just your house. Sometimes it's just in the land. It's everybody's, you know, everybody is dealing with it. God will cause us to go. And this is before he became Abraham. You know, Abraham was the one he called out. But right. Abraham got the blessing, the promise. You know, the, we the seed of Abraham, not the seed of Abram. So sometimes God will have you go into a, a land that's already a famine. And what I want to say, sometimes we got to live in the world but not be of the world. If we get in there and we get to looking at what it looks like all around us and, you know, stuff is falling down and, you know, I can't pay my bills and this, that, and that is going on, we start talking down and we're not thinking on these things which are lovely, which are pure, we can find ourselves depressed and, you know, be succumbed by the famine that's in the land. So, like I say, somebody, sometimes God will have us go to a place where there's a famine at. And if he have us go to a place, what does he want us to do? First of all, he want us to reverence him. So if we go to a place that's a famine and, you know, they going through, are we supposed to go in there like Eeyore, woe is me, and make it worse? Or are we supposed to go in there bringing the good news of Christ and, you know, the faith? That's why we got to make sure our cups are always full. Right. You know, don't be doing something. Well, I say all the time, what God put in your cup is for you. You got to be a little bit selfish. And that overflow that gets into the saucer, that's what you feed the people. You feed people out of your saucer. Don't feed them out of your cup. Because what God gives to you is for you. If You, you can't feed nobody if you drain dry. If you are famine in your inside of you, how you gonna do anything? How am I gonna take care? I know we grow up and we say, uh, you know, make sure our children eat, and then we go to bed and we don't have nothing to eat. Well, if I'm laying in bed and die because I'm of starvation, how am I supposed to get up and go to work and make sure my kids eat? So we sometimes we do things out of loyalty and out of emotion, and it's backwards. 
but we need to make sure that we eat in order to keep us going to be able to keep supplying the people, you know, our yeah. children or whatever. Leaders, we got, I mean, I know we grow up like that. We give all to the people, you know, people pleasing. But when the push come to shove, we learn that the people go about their way. They don't look at us, you know. They be, well, she a leader, she got it. Mm -hmm. She got that Cadillac, she, she, she good. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So let's go on to um, uh, the, the scripture I want y'all to write down is Genesis 41. 1 through 57. It's the whole, y'all know it's the whole story about Joseph interpreting dreams. But we're going to read verses 53 through 57. So it's 41 to 41, 1 through 57. But we're only going to read 53 through 57. It's the whole story. You know, when Joseph was in the pit and he was right. interpreting yeah. dreams. Only reading 53 through 57. It's the whole chapter of Joseph. And the seven years of plenteousness, plenteousness mm -hmm. that was in the land of Egypt were ended. And the seven years of dump began to come according as Joseph had said. And the dark was in all land, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. Mm -hmm. And when all the land of Egypt was famine, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he saith to you, do. And the famine was covered all over the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians. And the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy, for to buy corn, because that the famine was so sore in all the land. Who they come to buy corn from? Joseph. Joseph. He came, they came from Joseph. So he was in a land that had famine. Sometimes God will put you in a land of famine, and that land is like desolate, but he put you in that land, not just to be in that land. He put you, so you, sometimes we have a gift. You know, Joseph could interpret dreams. Sometimes, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you know, whatever. But he put him in that land to be a blessing to that land. Just because you show up at a land and it's one way, anytime you show up, you ought to be of influence. You ought, That land ought to change. The Bible says when Jesus showed up, demons cried out. Uh -huh. And I tell you all the time, anytime I go somewhere... You know, I you know, not me, but God in me changed sermons and everything else. They see Dr. Bell, and next thing you know, they preaching something totally different and coming at me or whatever. Right. So that's the demons crying out or whatever. They're not crying out at me, but they're crying out at the God in me. You right. know, he said they persecuted me. You know, who do I think I am? So when we show up in places, we ought to change the spirit, change the atmosphere, especially if it's wrong, if it's not of God. So if you have that type of influence, then you are on the right path. You are reverencing God the way you're supposed to reverence God. People ain't going to like it. You know, the, I was listening today. It said the truth will make you free. And the truth going to make you free because everybody can't handle the truth. They're going to cut you loose real quick. They don't want to hear. You know, I, I know some people in my life that as soon as I open my mouth, they don't go on Dr. Bell. They don't want to hear you know, especially if they had anything to do against me or and I put the truth out there, they don't want to hear the truth. So, yeah, it's going to cut you loose. It's going to make you free. Let's go to um, 2 Kings 7 and 4. He don't just put you in a famine for nothing. Right. You're supposed to ask God, okay, Lord, why am I here? What's my lesson? Go ahead. Can I interject? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I thought about what you said, and I thought about how, um, like, when you go to a land and it's parched, and, you know, God wants you sometimes to ca cultivate the land and yes. water the ground mm -hmm. when you get there. Yes. Um, I always taught my children growing up, and, you know, and uh, I hope they remember it now, but mm -hmm. when you go someplace, like you said, mm -hmm. either be of influence, uh -huh. or be a help or something yes. like that, but I always say, leave it better mm -hmm. than when you came. That's right. And yeah, whenever you go someplace, mm -hmm. that your footprint, thank yes. you, Holy Ghost. Come on. Your, your, your footprint 
is, is proof that fruit was there. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so you have, I call them game changers. You are uh, influencers. You are yep. game changers. Mm -hmm. You you change the atmosphere. You know, you're mm -hmm. trendsetters and stuff. So whenever you go someplace, and I said, and it could be even someplace simple or something. If you, you go and you stay the night at one of your friend's house or something or what have you, mm -hmm. I said, don't leave it in shambles. That's right. Don't ever leave a place in That's shambles. Right. Always right. do the right thing. Uh -huh. And I said, and then you, you take care of whatever you need to take care of, but always do something extra. Uh -huh. Make sure it's better yes. than when you got there. Yes. And I said, because what you do is you leave the spirit of uh, uh, your gifting and the mm -hmm. gift of helps, and then you leave a, a pleasant spirit there. You, you, what you do is you start squashing the enemy. Yes. The room for the enemy to even move. And yes. some people saying, she didn't even make up the bed when she lived. Right, whatever. right. You know, not only did she make up the bed, but she cleaned the bathroom, she cleaned the toilet, she changed the sheets, uh, and right. she, you know what I'm saying? And she yeah. left a little note on the bed, like right. she was in a hotel or something. Right. You know? and, uh, but, but, but that's the mentality yes. that as God's people, mm -hmm. We ought to always leave it better mm -hmm. than when we got there. Yes, that's there should what I always be a spirit, the spirit of the living yeah. God left in mm -hmm. a spirit of peace, mm -hmm. a spirit of calmness or something mm -hmm. left right. there. So the residue should be there that mm -hmm. God was there. Yes. Mm -hmm. right? right? Yeah. And that's what I was saying. I had somewhere to go this weekend. That's exactly what happened because... You know, they was doing what all they wanted to do, but when I got there, all of a sudden, respect showed up. They, uh -huh. doc, you know, they was, I'm sorry, I could get you in the room. You know, you always have to walk in a place, and you know, I, even before, when everybody else took off, I was like, okay, you want me to stay and help clean up, or whatever? Right. No. Whatever. You do what they don't do. Don't look like the world. Right. Yeah, that's how that's I teach her. She getting it. But, uh, let's go, what I say, Second Kings 7 and 4? Let's go there. If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. And we shall die there. And if we sit there still, if we sit still there, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall into the house of the Syrians. And if they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. This is, this speaks to anybody that suffering depression. I mean, how do you, what's your mindset? How do you look at things? Do you look at the cup half empty or do you look at the cup half full? If you are in a fight or in a battle, do you feel like you're just going to sit there and lose? Are you defeated before you even throw a punch or anything? Or that's do you believe, yeah, that's how they work. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that God is for you? We always got, I say all the time, we got all this God in our mouth. But do we have him in our heart to where he, you know, change our behavior? We, we, we say we saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. But some of us, when we talk, we can't tell. We, we just not can't tell. We, not when we get into that right. situation. Yeah. yeah. So if we go into the city and there's a famine in the city and we don't believe in our own mindset that God can change that famine or can do something better, we're already defeated. If we looking like the devil and acting like the devil and thinking like the devil, then guess what? We on the devil's side. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Ghost can't do nothing unless you believe, yeah, right. unless you render your spirit, you know, let him order your steps. Mm -hmm. So walking in, and don't get up in there and walk up in there and say, I got the Holy Ghost and you ain't there. You just going to lean to your own and say, you might get your butt whooped. Mm -hmm. Who was that in the Bible that got their butt whooped, Apostle? Name one of them. I can't think of them right now. They, you said, I think David. They went up in there and they were they was fought and the, the, God didn't protect them and they got their butt whooped. Oh yeah, uh, David. Yeah, yeah. David, yeah. Uh huh. David. Yeah. There was a couple of them. Um, oh, it was another king uh -huh. too that went and uh, oh, what was his name? Uh, Joshua. Yeah, Joshua. Yeah, Joshua. Yeah, Joshua. And they they took the spoils uh -huh. and they told them not to. Yes. And uh, the Lord had already told Joshua. You gonna take the land or what uh -huh. have you? But they went in there and they they were disobedient. Uh -huh. God told them don't touch nothing. Yes. Don't take nothing away. Uh huh. Because uh, I got this, but they took. The they stuff did it and anyway. They went, they went and did it, mm -hmm. and so they had to go and uncover. Mm -hmm. uh, who was that? I'm trying to think who it was. I can't oh, you know I gotta think of it now. Right. This is the book of Joshua. Yeah. Yeah. But um, they went and uh, and because of that, mm -hmm. uh, 
God gave them a death sentence. There yeah. were certain ones that he had to kill because they had went against God. Mm -hmm. But they end up losing. Uh -huh. Right. They end up losing right. because they went and took everything. Uh huh. Yeah. That's because we got God, Holy Ghost on the inside. We ain't, we ain't consulted the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost ain't told us to do nothing, but we lean into our own understanding. Mm -hmm. Like I was talking about Jonah last night. You know, Jonah getting on them people boat mm -hmm. or whatever. And Jonah, them people had to intercede for him. They stopped yeah. praying to their God <laughs> and prayed to his God yeah. to intercede yeah. for him yeah. or whatever. And he found himself in the belly of a well, thank God. Mm -hmm. If not, if them people had yeah. interceded yeah. from him, he'd have been done. You know, because he was in disobedience. But yeah, we got to make sure that we're leaning to the Holy Ghost. Let's go on over to Job. We know Job's story. They say he's the one, you know, the most patient person. But Job wasn't patient. He complained. He murmured. The only thing he didn't do was he didn't curse God. Let's go to uh, Job 5 and 20. It was the sin of Achan. Yes, that's it. That's it. Uh, Hid it up under the tent. That's right. The that's right. They went and hid all the yep. spoils in the tent. All the spoils. They tried the to bury it real uh, deep. Yep. yep. Kill that whole family. Whole family. Go whole home. family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Job 5 and 20. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Okay, sometimes God sent us to a famine to redeem, you know, in death. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we, you know, it's our judgment. And then sometimes when we go to something and people have done something and we, he redeems us. You know, sometimes we have to go through something and we have to apologize when we have, we don't feel like we've done anything. But God uses, it's like God uses family as a whooping stool to us sometimes. You know, if we don't have something or God is trying to get our attention, all he got to do is drive my finances. He got my full undivided Okay, Lord, what, what's going on? He, doing he got my full undivided attention. Okay, where is it? What's going on now, Lord? What am I supposed to learn? Did I do something wrong or whatever? But, you know, he knows, you know, that's my thorn in my side, you know, because I have, you know, one income, and as soon as that dry up, when the brook dry up, you know, I'm looking to God. Okay, you know, I'm trying to get other helps and everything, but they – being fashionably late and, and doing schoolwork, but no, I'm messing with it. <laughs> right. But yeah, but I'm just saying, God knows how to get our attention and he does it through, through famine. You know, the, the enemy, the adversary is God's whooping stick. You know, I don't know about corporal punishment, like what we used to get with corporal punishment back in the day. Nowadays you do that and they talk about child abuse. Right. Or whatever, yeah. but God use whatever He can yeah. <laughs> to get your we attention. Now, yeah, it, right. <laughs> Let's go to Psalms one hundred seven thirty four. A fruitful land, a fruitful land into barrenness, barrenness, uh -huh. barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. God will cause your fruitful land to dry up and become barren and not produce no more fruit if you are not obedient to him. If you're not doing the will of the Father, you're not here on this earth to do your will. you on this earth because he created you to do his will. Not free will. I mean, we have free will. We can go on and do free will all we want to and end up, and he'll be talking about, depart from me, I never knew you. We have got to find out what God created us for. Yes. If we never find out our, our purpose that God has for our life, we are not going to make it in. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you no lie. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that have gone through life, and they never found out what their purpose is. And I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say, oh, well, they in heaven. I don't know that. Mm -hmm. If they never found out, they, there's a whole bunch of, okay, I got it right, Mother Bernice. There's a whole bunch of people over there on that side in Woodlawn where grace done ran out. I can't tell you every last one of them knew their purpose. I can't tell you every last one of them is sitting with God. I can't tell you. What we need to do is make sure that we, our steps are ordered by the Lord and that we are in the purpose of God. Not the perfect will of God. Not just permissive will, getting by, but the perfect will of God. Let's go to my weeping prophet, Jeremiah 48, Even though you got the Holy Ghost, famine can hit your house. It can hit you. 
What we think is the increase can pass away. God is the only one that can redeem the time. Yes. He's the only one that can give and you know, we can you're wasted and all that kind of stuff. But God is the only one. And when He give it to you, it lasts. What's my scripture? It say He He His He maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jeremiah 48, 33. Joy and gladness. You can be running around here smiling, grinning, happy on life. Just like somebody was in social media. I better not say too much. They're going to kick me off YouTube. But somebody was, and all of a sudden, one day, he ain't, he ain't smiling and grinning no more. And there's a lot, and it breaks my heart, there's a lot of people hurt because, you know, they see a, a man fall. But that's because their faith was in a man and not in God. Let's go to Jeremiah 52 and 6. Proverbs 10 and 22. Make it add it no sorrow. That's right. Proverbs. That, she got the. There yeah, she go. Write it down. That's my scripture. Proverbs. <laughs> Woo. Proverbs. 10 and 22. Yeah, I say, what's my scripture? Yeah. Make us rich and add it no sorrow. I, t I can tell you what the Bible say. I can't tell you where it's at. But I, I know what it say. I've been all over the Bible so many times. I need to memorize the scriptures. I really do. That way I don't have to go look for it when people ask me. Yeah, let's go to Jeremiah 52 and 6. Six. 52 and 6. And in the fourth month, in the ninth day of the month, the famine was stored in the city so that there was no bread for the people of the land. Okay. God has his own timetable. Mm -hmm. That's what God gave me that one for, his own timetable. Then people wasn't hungry for two or three days. Then people wasn't hungry for a week, like my daughter said, Mama, ain't nothing in the refrigerator. <laughs> it's because nothing she wanted. But then people was hungry. That was the fourth month and the ninth day of the month. Yeah. Then people was hungry. God saw them people going through. He heard their hunger pains. Yeah. But God, he did what he did. He allowed it to happen. Mm -hmm. Because God, he, he not going to be mocked. Right. He just yeah. not. Let's go to Ezekiel 14, 13. He don't care how hungry you get. Mm. You're going to do his will. So will I break down the wall that you have Ezekiel 14, 13. 13, 14. 14, 13. 14, 13. Son of man, when the land sinned against me by transgressing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. That's pretty self-explanatory. When we come against God and we sinning against God, God ain't gonna play with that. He stretch his hand out. You don't want your hand, his hand stretch out against you. You know, everybody, you know, got that spirit of compromise. You know, you know, God can't stand compromise. And they do what they want to do, but just because God ain't said nothing now, y'all living under grace. Let's just say we living under grace because God ain't did nothing now. But there comes a time when God gets tired of grace, grace runs out. Like I say, there's a whole cemetery of them over there. When he stretched forth his hand, if, if there ain't nobody sitting there interceding for you, praying for you, like Moses, I always talk about Moses was going to kill them six, I mean, he was going to kill them 6,000 in the mountain in the book of Exodus. If Moses hadn't prayed, them 6,000 men would have been dead. 
He said, wait, hold on, God. If you do it now, they're going to say you couldn't do it, that you couldn't take them to the promised land. Moses, one man interceded for 6,000 people. Don't tell me that you can't get a prayer in for your family, your, you, your friend. You can get a prayer to God. Yes, you can. Yes. So there are people, like I say, I, you know, I'm with a, you know, I work in the world or whatever, mm -hmm. and I'm always praying and interceding, you know, because I see things. And like I say, we in the world, but we not of the world. I don't condone what the world do. When they ask me a question, I'm going to tell them the truth. And then they say, go on, Belle. Shut up. Sit down. Go. You go on somewhere. But I'm going to tell them the truth because, you know, they're going to know. Even in my own household. Y'all know what's going on in my own household. I still tell them the truth. I'm like, I raised you better than that. You know the word. That's between you and God. And I leave right. it at that. I don't sit there and pound my children or nothing on the head with a Bible. I say, I know you know the word. I know you know the requirements. So that's between you and God. At some point, my kids are grown now. You know, it's I ain't nothing. I can't save them out of nothing. They of age. All they can do is call me mama. As long as it's a free call. You know, I ain't bailing nobody out of jail. <laughs> they on their own now. So let's go to Job 1 and 16. Look, I got this in order. Joel, 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 J O E L, Joel, 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 Joel 1. I know I got this in order. Joel 1 16. Uh huh. Actually, we're going to make this the last one because it's 7.30. Joel 1 and verses 16 through 20. That's it. That's it for tonight. I was running late because somebody. <laughs> is, it, is not the meat cut off before our eyes? Yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seed is brought under their plots. The garners are laid desolate. The burn... The barns are broken down, for the corn is withered. Mm. How do the beasts groan? The herds of the cattle are perplexed, because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of the sheep are made desolate. O Lord, to thee will I cry, for the fire that has devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field cry also unto thee, for the rivers of the waters are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. See? That's just another account where people wasn't doing right, and God cut off the meat, cut off the food. When God cuts off the meat and the food, you, he gets your attention. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Them hunger pains tend to get your attention. And you know, it's funny how they start crying out to God when they're feeling all them hunger pains. But they, he was trying to get them to cry out before they. We need to make, pay attention, and I believe Apostle said it this week, you know, at church. We need to make sure that we cry out to God before we get ourselves into trouble. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine what it would be like to cry out to God beforehand, to walk and talk with God beforehand? That's the life I live, that I try to live. You know, I get up every morning, I talk to God, and I walk in worship because I never know who I'm going to run into every day. I never know, you know, God may send me somebody that don't know Christ. And I can't be in my flesh. I got to be in, you know, them people at that place. I know, I understand I get paid for doing clients and stuff like that. But because I, who I am and they know who I am, like I say, I don't turn off Dr. Bell. And I know I'm not Medicaid compliant because I can only teach what's all coming, you know, on my heart. So we be having service up in there. And like I say, my boss, he knows the word too. So those people are really transitioning. People are actually coming out of the you know, streets into their own homes. They're changing their mindsets. Mm -hmm. They, Amen. you know, pre professing Christ. You know, they believe in God. Half of them ain't doing what they're supposed to do. But, you know, they're coming towards God. They're not coming towards us. Right. So we need to make sure that we're ready in season and out of season all the time. We never know who we're going to walk into. Like I said, I always walk in worship. I let my hair down in front of many me. She know what, you know, I take my teeth out and all that. <laughs> but when I'm out here, I'm performing, I'm reverencing God. I have to, wherever I go, wherever he sent me. I went to somebody's house uh, Sunday. And I I'm just sat there to eat, but I still was on post. You never know what people need. You never know what people are going through. And just me sitting there, 
it calls, you know, people act a, a certain way. It's how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're compromising, you can't leave nobody around the corner. Because they're going to look at you and say, how you going to tell me you're doing the same thing I'm doing? Right. Or whatever. So I always, not that I'm perfect, but I always try to walk in a way that God will have to, um, if he need to use me, I'm, I'm ready and available. I ain't got to say, well, wait a minute, Lord, let me get over here and fix my hair. Let me put my teeth in. Let me, right. let me, let me, I can't, no, because I could be in Walmart and somebody may go postal. Mm -hmm. They may need somebody at that given moment. So when I come out that door, I don't make sure my makeup and everything is on. You know how we do when we was growing up. Make sure your makeup on, your dress right. You know, I do that, but I don't stop there. I make sure my spirit is right, right. to be able to receive right. people. And, you know, sometimes I get in my flesh because I'm dealing with a lot of people and I'm like a vacuum. I deal with a lot of diagnosis and people coming at me all the time. So sometimes I have to isolate and I go to myself or whatever. But I'm just trying to get, we need to be a people that's ready in season and out of season. I know I say that all the time, but that is heavily in my spirit. We, I don't care how old or how young we are, many me, we need to be ready in season and out of season because you never know. You may speak to somebody and they go home and that's their last breath. Right. We just at that time, if you don't know it's the end time, something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you don't see the book of Revelation unfolding, something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. And you know, get back in that word. And, you know, look at it for yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm off my soapbox. Uh, somebody pray us out. Yeah, you got to work again. <laughs> Gracious and heavenly Father, God, we thank you right now. Thank you, we thank you right now for this opportunity to put this fellowship tonight, God. Thank yes. you for such an amazing Bible study tonight yes. to learn of your word, thank to you. learn more of you, to get closer to you, God, and to do things right, Father God. Yes. God, we thank you right now, God, for the vessel that has come tonight, God. We pray thank God's you. blessings upon her, that you give her increase right now, God. We yes. thank you yes. for the sacrifice right now, thank God, yes. uh, for the gift, God, that you have yes. allowed her to bless us with on tonight, God. Yes. And we pray for increase in her life and yes. every yes. area of her life now, thank God. Pray for the people that are under the sound of my voice tonight, God. Yes, Thank you, God, for uh, for allowing him to open their doors tonight, God, so yes, we can Lord. speak of your word and talk of your word, and we yes, can uh, come God. together in, in agreement in your word, God. Yes, so we bless each and every person tonight, God. We pray, Thank God, you, as they go back to their homes and to their rooms, God, that yes, it will be well in their soul. Yes, Allow their spirit to continue to flourish, God. Give them everything that they need, God. Allow no lack of nothing, God, to come uh, up against them, God. And we pray right now that you would keep them in perfect peace, God. And so, God, when we get ready to go down in this place, never leave our presence. And God will give you uh, praise, glory, and honor. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You left that way over there, and I got a way over here to turn it off.